What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of Slinging Lead Live. I am, of course, your host, TJ, the Lead Slinging Ginger. Before we get into things, guys, I also want to say, please head on over to rightonoptics.com. They are the chosen optics manufacturer for the Lead Slinging Ginger channel. Variable power optics, red dots, magnifiers, binoculars, anything and everything you could hope for for your optics shooting needs. Head on over to rightonoptics.com. Remember, code TRAMSEY will get you 15% off at checkout. Also want to give a shout out to my friends over at Head Down Firearms, a fantastic uh, American company manufacturing some very quality AR-15s, uh, various lengths and calibers, as well as providing some very awesome uh, slide cuts and optics packages for your Glock firearms. So with that, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the show. Of course, this is the long range show and no long range show would be complete without our very own Cameron Hayes. Cameron, how you doing, brother? I'm all right, man. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excited that you brought me on. Of course, bro. Of course. Happy to have you. And of course, the the beloved co-host, hetero life mate, Kent Hauer of Green Mountain Defense. What's up, brother? How are you doing? Who said hetero? I didn't say hetero. You said I, hetero. I did. I absolutely did. What's going on, everybody? Having fun. Happy to be here. Get ready to take notes and learn from Cam. This is going to be good. Yeah, folks. Spoiler alert. This is going to be a lot of a one-sided conversation. <laughs> I Long range is 50 yards, right? Or uh, <laughs> That's a short pistol range, but sure. Yeah. But no, so with that, guys, um, as you know, if you've been following me on Instagram lately, I have been uh, actually got a chance to go out to the range this past weekend. Actually, on Memorial Day, got to go throw some some pills out at 500 yards with my Ruger American 308. Uh, obviously topped with a right-on optic 4 to 16 power scope, and it performed beautifully. I'll be posting the video to that here shortly. But uh, Cam... Yeah. Let's start with the platform, right? So when we when we think or we talk about long range, no no long range conversation or at least long range platform conversation would would be worth its salt if we didn't address the primary differences between semi-automatic and bolt action. Right? Absolutely. So, so I'm going to defer to your expertise here. So first of all, what are some of the pros and cons of each? And is there really a an expectation difference with regards to quote unquote precision when you're engaging targets at long range? Well, so the big thing that you have to take into account whenever you're going from like a, a bolt gun to a gas gun is tolerance. You know, like uh, the tolerances that you're dealing with on a bolt gun are going to be much tighter than a gas gun because you have a lot more moving parts with your gas gun, you know. So um, but that being said, it doesn't mean that you can't have a precise you know, gas gun. I, most of your precision comes from your barrel and chamber. And out of most gas guns that people are running, I mean, it, it pretty much everybody's running, you know, an AR-15 type or an AR-10 type uh, arm. Um, you know, if you put a good. Uh, barrel and with a good chamber and everything like that uh, on it, it's not unheard of to achieve, you know, dime size groups or anything like that. Like uh, the one that I shoot most commonly, even in open division, um, when, whenever I shoot team matches and stuff like that is a five, five, six uh, that I've worked up a load. That's half. It's consistently half in my way. And I get pretty decent velocity out of the 75 grain Hornadies. So, Oh really? So you're, you're actually running five, five, six for uh, in your, in your competitions. Most of them, yeah. That's actually kind of impressive. I honestly, you know, my own bias is, you know, being exposed here. I did not imagine five, five, like when you tell me long range, I think 500 plus yards and five, five, six doesn't fall into that category for me. Um, well, okay. So I, I didn't get, I forgot to do this a minute ago. I'm going to do it now. It'd be, it's kind of weird that I broke backwards, but uh, I didn't get to mention like some of the some of the you know sponsors and people or whatever oh yeah by all means but it's kind of relevant to what we're talking about right now because some of the people who i'm going to name drop are people who host matches around where i live in the carolinas okay so yeah, go uh, for it so, so i went and shot the a day in the arena match uh that ash hess put on uh ash hess and uh, and jack uh they were hosting a match they've got another one coming up in october I ended up in fifth place uh, for light division in that match. Light division meaning you're shooting five five six. Heavy division was three oh eight, and open division was any chambering. And that was a uh, designated marksman type match. 
And that was honestly the closest uh, to a designated marksman match that I've ever shot. Like it was awesome. Um, And it was at arena training facility in Georgia. I've shot, you know, I shot the Bushnell elite sniper challenge up there and stuff like that. Um, And we did pretty well, me and my partner, because I shoot partner matches and I shoot individual matches. Um, But the reason that I shoot five, five, six is one, it puts me in light division whenever I shoot regular stuff, which is, you know, that, that is what it is. But whenever you shoot a lot of team matches, it doesn't matter what division you're shooting in. Usually the secondary shooter has to shoot either 5.56 or 3.08. So since I've already got, you know, a rock solid, you know, secondary gun, I'll run that in pretty much any competition I shoot. And honestly, if the target's 700 yards away and in, I can generally get first round impacts on it. Um, If it's beyond 700, uh, my bullet starts to go transonic at that point or reach the transonic zone, which is Mach 1.2 or 1,350 feet per second at sea level. And uh, so my bullet destabilizes so much that it's kind of inconsistent where it's going to go at that point. Um, but anyway, uh, control solutions, muzzle brakes. Uh, I put their muzzle brakes on, you know, like most of my guns uh, because, you know, recoil impulse is just blah, on three on a lot of 308s, gas guns and stuff like that. I know it's spicy mayonnaise to talk about uh, recoil impulse in 308. Uh, Aerodynamics is the the ones who paid for me to go shoot the Bushnell. Okay. Um, yeah, and they're actually building me a six millimeter comp match right now. So mm-hmm. they're they're building me a a a Wildcat rifle. It's uh basically it's a six millimeter projectile that's moving about 3,200 feet per second. I've heard of 3,400 feet per second, which is just smoking. And I've heard of people, you know, run it at 3,000 to be safe because there's usually a limit on a lot of the competitions or whatever. Um, but I'm going to start running that. It's going to be a bolt gun. It's a Remington 700 action. Um, I believe I went with a, a Brux or maybe a Bartline barrel. I'm not I'm not 100% sure. But it's almost complete. He actually sent me a picture right whenever we started this conversation. He sent me a picture of, like, my, my rifle's current progress, like where it's at right now. Um. One of my partners that I shoot with for aerodynamics is Adolphus Jones. AJ, he's a he's a friend of mine. Um, Ashton Johnson is another good friend of mine. I talk to that dude like every day. Well, I was until my work schedule changed. But um, and he's he's the guy who wins like a whole bunch of like the Guardian matches and stuff like that. He runs a 260 Remington bolt gun. Um, Todd Resource Management's one of my sponsors. I shoot a lot of their matches in South Carolina. And uh, they they also let me shoot a lot of my YouTube videos out there. So I'm really grateful for uh, Richard and uh, and his matches are awesome too. The last match that I shot at Todd Resource Management, uh, me and Ashton Johnson shot it. And we came in first place for the ROs because we were RO in the match. We came in first place for the ROs and third place overall. And, And it was so crazy. What separated us from first place was three targets. So three targets separated us from first place and first place would have cleaned it minus one target. So yeah, that, it's, it's always something, something small. Uh, Todd Van Langham, uh, he was a special forces sniper and he was a warrant officer and all this other stuff. Um, just like professional body stacker, just a badass. And uh, he ha- hosted a match at um, arena training facility, the Bushnell elite. Um, I'm sorry. Was it the Bushnell that he hosted? Might have been the Bushnell. Um, but he was at um, – he went to the arena training facility match or was hosting the match or whatever. And dude is just awesome. It turns out he lives at uh, – he lives in North Carolina too, and I didn't even know that. But he's uh, supposed to come shoot one of my matches. Here you know, there, there's a lot worse problems to have than going to so many matches that you forget who's hosting what. I'm just, right? I'm just going to put that out there, buddy. <laughs> um. I don't know if you guys were tracking, but uh, Resurgence PPG, it's that uh, that um, charity that I donate to that uh, has disabled veterans and takes them out on uh, paramotor rides and stuff like that. Yeah, actually, actually, as I recall, I think I even donated to that. You did. You did for my birthday. Thank you. Yeah, my, my birthday was last week. so. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, by the way, go any of those charities, because I know you're really involved in a lot of the charities, send me links to that stuff. I'll cross post it for you. We'll get some traffic generated for those charities as well. Dope. What's a paramotor? Um, it's, a, it it's a big fan attached to a parachute. Oh, oh, oh. Pretty, yeah, pretty spot on, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking like a wheelchair thing or something. No, I'm, not, no. I'm not joking. So that they actually do have uh, versions of a paramotor where 
it it has wheels. It is for um, uh, mobility, m mobility limiting um, injuries and stuff like that. Like they right. have uh, different ones for you know people who like are missing limbs and shit, right? Um, and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, resurgence. I actually donated an AR-15 from Palmetto State Army. And I, I bought. I bought an AR-15 and then I donated it to Resurgence so they could raffle it off, and they ended up making like, I don't know, like more than the more than the gun was worth. But I just wanted to help, you know, kind of generate some more um, revenue their way because I, I I believe in in their uh, company. Um, Ray Helms, I don't know if you guys are familiar with who he is. He is uh oh he has his YouTube channel and it completely just slipped my mind. So now I feel like an idiot. Um. He's kind of a big deal on YouTube. Anyway, he uh, he was hosting a Microtech Knives uh, DDM match is what it was originally called. And the match was awesome. It was a team match, um, and but it was labeled as a designated marksman match. And at the end of the match, I had said I had made a suggestion about what it was called. You know, it being called a designated marksman match. I came prepared for a designated marksman match, but it was much much, much closer to a sniper match. So now it is no longer called a designated marksman match because I had made that suggestion. Now it is a precision rifle match. Okay, um, so let, let, let's pause here for a second because we've thrown out a couple of different terms here, and I think we need to clarify something, especially for, more for me. <laughs> but I'm sure there's a lot in our audience uh, that would like to know as well. So you've talked about a couple of different match types. So you've talked about uh, a sniper match. Of course, there's precision rifle matches and, and DRM. Right. So can you go into what each of those are? Of course I can. So per like definition, to me at least, whenever you're going to these competitions, this is not, you know, combat related. But if you're going to slap a name on it like that and it's not going to be precision rifle match, you know, at least have it have it with what you're calling it. You know, uh, to me, a designated marksman is, you know, a member of a squad who is moving as a member of a squad who has a uh, range increasing um, capability. So, you know, like your regular people in your squad are going to be carrying M4s and uh, and saws and, two, and you know, uh, 320 grenade launchers. Sorry, I almost called them 203s. We don't use those anymore um, and stuff like that. And then you're going to have one designated marksman in the squad who's going to be carrying, you know, an M110 or unfortunately an M14. Um, and their position. You're making me, I just want to say, you're making me feel really old. They don't use the 203 anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, dude, when I, went, when I went overseas last year, they were issuing out these like little grenade launchers, and I was like, what the hell is that? And they were like, that's the new grenade launcher. And I was like, huh. I'm over here feeling like grandpa. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what that is. But anyway, <laughs> um. The, the 320 is pretty dope, though. If you get the opportunity to check it out, it is pretty cool. Oh, no, I've seen them. I've seen yeah. them. But before, just the special people used to get them. And lowly, lowly little guys like the ginger here, we got stuck <laughs> with an M16 with a 203 attached to it. Yeah. I didn't even get the M4 uh, variant. <laughs> Lols. But um, anyway, so uh, the designated marksman is going to be the member of the squad who has the range – range increased weapons so like they might have an m110 inside of the squad so they have a more capable weapon than the m4 uh sometimes a designated marksman will have an m16a4 sometimes they'll have an m4 with an acog or a low power variable optic i know uh kent just recently did a video about low power variable optics um but yeah so like it, it's the person who can reach out a little bit further than the regular capabilities of your squad but okay, he, so, so, you know, say, so how does that play into – how is a match set up around that concept? Okay, so a designated marksman is the individual. Okay. So, like, in a sniper match, typically it's a team match. You know, you have your sniper and then you've got your spotter. Um, so, typically sniper matches are primary shooter, secondary shooter, stuff like that. So, if you have a primary and a secondary, that to me is already leading more towards sniper match. Whereas designated marksman is an individual, okay, as, it should, okay. as they should be, um, and then also like uh, target distances. Uh, designated marksmen were put in place to bridge the gap between your standard infantry soldier, your standard foot soldier, who's reaching out to maybe three hundred yards, 
and your sniper who is going from like 600 to a thousand yards maybe uh so you're trying to bridge that 300 to 600 gap as okay. a designated marksman Got and it. of course you can, you can extend out a little bit beyond that and, and then of course come in closer um so then the target distance is a big one uh target size uh, designated marksman match, in my opinion, should have larger targets, and the reason why is because your role as a designated marksman is, you know, stacking bodies. Um, s- same for a sniper, but more like the sniper stuff is precision. You're making the precise shot, maybe a, a headshot kind of thing or whatever. So target size, to me, uh, dictates also what kind of match it is. Um, oh, yeah, and if your targets are um, camouflaged, so I'm not saying that a designated marksman would not have to make a shot on a cam on a camouflaged enemy, but if all of your targets are camouflaged and you have to find them and it's a chore to find them, like a challenge, that's leaning more towards a sniper match. And and that's what I was getting with with uh, Ray Helms. Uh, Ray was hosting that match and it was the DDM match uh, at Clinton House, South Carolina, and it was labeled as a designated marksman match. So I came prepared for a designated marksman match and then whenever i actually came into the match i quickly realized that it was a sniper match and right. you know I, I told that to ray he was really perceptive he, he just you know he, he they changed the name to a precision rifle match um but it was just like the targets were all gray and they were typically in shadows so because they were in shadows and stuff like that it made the targets difficult to see so that right there is, you know, camouflage targets. Uh, the target distances, they were out a lot of the shots were out past, you know, six, seven, eight hundred yards. Um, the targets were generally small. Uh, most of them were um, uh, 33% Ipsix, if I'm not mistaken, or 66% Ipsix. And, uh, and you had a, a primary and a secondary shooter. So, you know, like a, like a sniper and a spotter type thing. But anyway. Sam, I have a question for you. Send it. So us pistol people are used to IDPA, USPSA, stuff like that. Is there a governing body for this stuff or is this all wildcat and it depends on who's hosting? Uh, so you were talking about USPSA? My, oh, point is, my point is pistol matches have like a governing body that sets the rules and standards for these things. Yeah, is there, so, what is that so, for rifle shooting? Y- yes, so... By the way, Ray Helms is X-ring. I just threw it in the comments that it's yeah. it, X-ring is his YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was hoping you would see it. I didn't know if you were on your phone or what and couldn't see the chat, but yeah, well, he actually, said the uh, setup we've got going is I'm talking to you guys on my phone, and over to my left I've got my laptop set up, and on my laptop I've got like I've got the I've got it pulled up on there just so that I can read the uh, the comments and stuff. Yeah, so your 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 boy Ashton's in the chat too. So uh, thank yeah, you guys, yeah. thank you guys very much for joining. Uh, much appreciated. Yeah. So all right. So you were talking about you know like rules. Uh, generally, a match director, and fortunately for me, all the precision rifle matches that I've shot since I've been home this past year, everybody who's directed these matches has been like a just a stellar dude. Like it's been. Richard Todd, who, you know, he's one of my he's one of my sponsors. So, I mean, of course, I have to pretend like I like him. But the dude is actually awesome. He's a great guy. He's, he's like he's a he's just awesome. You know, just what we were talking about, competitive shooters, just being great people. Um, I had never met Ray Helms in person, but he had showed up as my, like one of my mutual friends for a long time on Facebook. And I finally added him. Awesome dude. Uh, Todd Van Langen. Awesome dude. Um, Ash Hess and uh, Jack L. Awesome dudes, like all these guys, just like awesome people. But your question was about like the way they host the, the way that these matches go. So you you shoot USPSA. You ever shoot outlaw? That was my question. So it's an outlaw match. Can be. Okay. If you speak with PRS, which a lot of people give PRS a really bad name. And I per, me personally, I don't shoot PRS matches. And uh, I have my own personal reasons for that that I'm not going to go into uh, on this live video right now. But there are, you know, you can shoot PRS um, or you can shoot, you know, these these little sub matches and stuff like that. I prefer the the sub matches. And it, it's not because, like, you know, you're not going against the same kind of people. It's it's because it's a different kind of match. And so, like better. so let me refine my question a little bit. 
for yeah. the uh, for the dunce like myself, who's got a one to six or a one to four on a sixteen inch or an eleven inch Daniel defense, and I'm sitting here on practice score going, you know what? I might shoot a rifle match. That might be fun. What what should I look up and what terms? What things should I look for to understand what I'm getting into? Match over match over match. Because your boy ain't hitting no 700 yard camouflage, nothing with a one to four. Um, that just ain't happening. You know what? You're you're wrong. You could totally hit. I believe in you. I think you could do it with irons, my man. I don't care how bad your vision is. Anyway, I I, uh, I, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think he knows how bad your vision is, kid. <laughs> 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 There's a reason I run red dots on pistols, bro, and it ain't because of Instagram. My man's, I feel you. Um, so no, actually, Ash Hess and Jack are doing um another one of their designated marksman matches in October, and their their match was, in my opinion, more. It was one of the more designated marksman friendly type matches. Like it was, it was as close to a designated marksman match that I've shot. And for that role, I think a one to six or a one to eight is appropriate for that role. The only target um, that was in his match where I actually ran my scope uh, beyond 10 power was there was a shot that you had to make that was a 1,280 yards or 1,180 yards, something like that. And I ran my scope up a little bit for that one. But so. so I want to chime in here just to uh, just to kind of capitalize or caveat on what Cameron's saying here, Kent. When I first started shooting long range, right with my with my bolt gun, I only had a three to nine power on that scope or a three to nine power optic on that rifle. I was able to hit accurately at five hundred yards with that three hundred eight. The adjustments were there. The capabilities were there. So I'm quite confident that if you had like a one to eight or even a one to six, you could do it. The question is at that point is will the bullet you're shooting get you to that distance? Yeah, I guess, I guess my point was for those of us who don't know what we're looking into and X ring actually mentioned shoot a local two gun match, uh, planning on doing so. I got one scheduled in two weeks. Um, I've done right. I don't want to sound like I've never done rifle work. I've done, you know, tactical rifle classes right but that's 50 and 100 yards maybe 200 um i've never stretched my equipment out to 700 i've never had the opportunity to do something like that just not in my wheelhouse so yeah and that's why would shoot something like this i i I think it'd be a lot of fun especially you know cam if you're doing it with a a 556 i'll take out my my 16 inch and you know with throw throw a decent optic on top of it and i'd call it good but um One of the issues we run into around here, and I, I think Kent, I think you're kind of in the same boat that I am. There are obviously there's long ranges around here, and I'm sure you might have access to some within arguably driving distance, but there's not a whole lot of matches going on. Yeah, I went to one. I never no, mind. Well, I won't me, even go there. Yeah, won't let, even go there. Yeah, I went we'll, to a real bad. We'll save that nightmare for another conversation. Yeah, never um, mind. But no, what I'm saying is, is that you'll find a two gun match. But the max you'll be shooting is like two, maybe 300 yards. You know, I used to shoot three gun all the time, but literally once, maybe twice a month, I'd be at the three gun match and we never shot outside of 300 yards. And the range went to 500 at that, in that particular instance. So it's having those match directors. And I think, Cam, that's kind of capitalizing on what you're saying is you find the good match directors to follow and connect in and plug in that way. Mm hmm. So uh, a, a couple things that you guys touched on and then kind of like moved on past it. You're talking about 16 inch guns and uh, can't, you were talking about pistols and stuff like that. So one of the myths that need to be dispelled is that your barrel length affects your precision of your, um, your rifle or pistol or whatever. And it doesn't, a shorter barrel is, is more rigid. Uh, the only thing that you gain from a longer barrel is velocity. Right. So, I will put a longer barrel, you know, typically on a uh, on a on a rifle that I'm shooting in a precision rifle match because I want to decrease my danger space. I want to have uh, more velocity so that my bullet's coming down at, at less of a steep angle. Uh, Ash Ash Hess, 
he shot a precision rifle type match, as I understand, with an 11 and a half inch uh, Knight's Armament. And I think he won. So, you know, you can shoot your short barreled guns and that, that's absolutely fine. You know, it's like you just got to, you know, be a boss about it. <laughs> you can't be. Um, and you were talking about uh, distance. Most, most of my match prep before I go into a match is done at 100 meters and in because 100 yards is shorter than 100 meters. So if I have a 100 meter range, I can do almost everything I need to do as far as like learning uh, my rifle and optic and ammunition combination at those distances. The only thing that you can't train at, you know, the shorter distances or, you know, shorter distances, hundred meters and in um, is wind really. And I mean, of course your bullet drop, you can't confirm it out the distance at a hundred or whatever, but you know, like simpler stuff like that. But most of the work that I do is at a hundred meters and in, uh, I stopped at X ring or, J or uh, Ray Helms. Awesome dude. Um, Krauss arms. So Krauss arms sent me, um, a gun to evaluate for and be waiting for a review. Cause there is going to be one. Um, I made a couple of suggestions for some things that they should, uh, change about it coming from a competitive shooter standpoint. And uh, from what I understand, they're going to be making some changes to a couple of their guns that they're about to release based on my opinions on what they should change. And it's going to be more more lean towards precision rifle shooters. Um, Patrick Kelly, we always talk about Pat. Awesome, dude. I'm glad that he's happy again. It, it made me feel so good whenever he would like tag me in something. He's smiling real big. I'm like, yes, that's my man right there. He was going through that, you know, that uh, rough time. And then now he's he's smiling again. I love to see that. Hey man, we um, got we got nothing but love for Pat Kelly on this channel. Love that dude. Um, primary arms. Uh, I I run their optics on a lot of stuff, and you know, like they're they're budget optics, but they're not cheap. You know, like they're they're affordable. Uh, I think that cheap is kind of like a it's kind of like a bad word. It's where people automatically go, oh, well, that's cheap. That means it's like you know it's not made well. Most of the matches that I shoot, I'm shooting this 556 uh, gas gun with a primary arms R grid on it, four to 14. It was like a $300 scope. And I've been winning matches with that. So, and the rifle's a rifle that I put together. Um, PRC, uh, precision rifle components. The uh, Josh, he used to work for Criterion Barrels, he started PRC. And uh, they're going to be releasing some products and they're going to possibly send some my way and let me uh, try them out and stuff like that. Um, also, check out my awesome T-shirt, guys. I'm wearing a Jurassic Park shirt. I just wanted to make that super clear to you guys. <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm not wearing like my Night Force hat and like, you know, like my 511 stuff. I was like J Park. <laughs> anyway, sorry. All right. So me and you had talked about uh, we were talking about scopes a little bit ago or wait were we done with uh, application driven guns or were we going to continue with that no no I, I think we're good i think we're good I th so just to summarize the first portion of this um i think what you're really getting at is ever you know obviously the difference between the bolt action and the gas gun is each of them is going to have their place but if you're looking at getting into the precision game or just the drm game or the sniper game whatever the case might be you can accomplish both with both platforms. I think we've satisfactorily dispelled the myth that AR pattern precision guns are still are still salient enough to perform well in those arenas. So I agree. So, okay, so what, another thing I wanted to talk about. So you talked about, obviously, 5.56. You've talked about 308. What is your ideal caliber outside of those two that you prefer for precision or long-range shooting? Not necessarily for competition, but just getting out there and stretching the legs out on it. What's your ideal caliber? Caliber is an easy – I have an – I have – two that like as far as caliber is concerned chambering is what would kind of change my answer so i like 243 caliber guns and 264 caliber 
guns, which would be six millimeter and 6.5. Okay. Chambering chambering wise, I would have to say if I'm banging out to like a mile, I would say six, five Creedmoor. Um, or like one of the, uh, six millimeter wildcat guns, like the, uh, six comp match and, uh, even 243, if you've got the right twist rate of barrel, um, and, and good hand loads, um, six millimeter and six, five, I'm a huge fan of six, five Grendel. Like it's to me, it, it feels, it feels such a, a, a good gap between like 308 and 556 to me that, I can do I can do a whole lot with six five Grendel and I'm a I'm a really big fan of it. And uh I have a twelve inch six five Grendel with a one to six on it that I love. Love that gun. It got sent to me um from Palmetto State Armory. They they just sent it to me to try it out for them and whatever. And I tried it out and I was like, Yeah, I'm buying this. So I ended up purchasing it after they sent it to me to uh, evaluate or whatever. I was like, Yeah, I'm definitely keeping this. Because I've shot, I've shot that out to 800 yards at a first round impacts. So. Oh yeah. So I, I've actually been looking quite closely at six at 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 six five Grendel, mostly because like I've already got this 18 inch or not 18 inch gun, but uh, my 16 inch gun that I was using for for three gun matches. As of right now, it's just sitting there because three gun matches have kind of dried up where I'm at. So I was thinking, throw a six five Grendel barrel on it. And go from there because I've I've been seeing some pretty awesome things with that with that cartridge. Yeah, I've a uh, b- barrel length. You know, like it, barrel length is always dependent. You know, like anytime you put so, a longer okay, barrel- real quick. So you talked about six five Grendel. Let's start, let's just answer that question right now. What's the ideal barrel length for that for that cartridge? It depends on your application. I want to shoot yeah. out. I'll, I want to stretch it out as far as I can. Say 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 a thousand yards. Um, I would say that you're probably not going to want to go beyond a 24 in, 22 or 24 inch barrel, uh, maybe a 26, uh, because a lot of people don't realize this. They, they're like, well, why don't you just put a 36 inch barrel on it? Because then you get more barrel. You start to get diminishing return. Yep, if you laws of diminishing return. Return. Yep. Yeah. If, if you have too much barrel, your bullet eventually starts to slow down before it even gets to the end of the barrel. What you really want out of your barrel is you want all your powder burn up before the, the projectile exits. So, you know, it can be, if you're doing hand loads or whatever, have you a powder that's going to be, you know, good with that barrel length and stuff like that. You know, like run, run, tailor your load. That's why you hand load, you know, you hand load to tailor a load to a gun. Okay. So if, so for guys like, like Kent who, who, might not be getting into that game yet. And Ken, I'm going to go ahead and ask this for you. What are some off-the-shelf offerings in those types of cartridges that you recommend? Is there a particular uh, manufacturer that already makes some really good precision ammo? Because here's the thing. Like most of these people that that are going to watch this probably aren't hand-loading. So naturally, now being, being a steward of the, of the sport and the industry – I want as many people reloading as possible, right? But, you know, when you're just getting started into it, you don't know if you're going to like it or really get into it that much. Um, you just want to go buy 100 rounds off the shelf, right? What's a good What's a good manufacturer? What's a good off-the-shelf solution for that? Because mm. I have a feeling Walmart don't sell it. <laughs> so... If you, if you're if the name of the game is precision, I would say you know maybe go gorilla ammo, prime ammo, you know something like that. But not everybody makes you know the kind of money that can afford you know dollar fifty around two dollar round ammunition that you know like federal offers and stuff like that or some of those other manufacturers. Me personally, what has worked for me is Hornady. I like Hornady ammunition a lot. Um, I like their ELDMs. Their uh, their ELDM projectiles. I use those a lot in my six, five Grindel. Um, actually I have some right here on the table. Um, I've got the 120 grain ELD match right here. Yep. These are some projectiles. I actually, I actually load the ELDMs in my 308. Yeah. I, I've got, Oh, no, 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 no. these are a maxes. <laughs> I've got a maxes for my 308. Um, I couldn't find Same bullet. Same bullet. <laughs> It, it kind of is. It kind of, kind of is. It's got a slightly different BC. 
But um, yeah, I uh, I've got the 120 grain ELDs. I've got the SSTs for hunting and and self defense and stuff like that. So Hornady, in my opinion, is is a good like. I can go buy this off the shelf and it's probably going to work. Okay. It's probably going to work better than okay, actually. So I, I would say Hornady is a good, is a good, like good bet that you, you can just purchase it. And I mean, even my hand loads that I run my five, five, six, I use the 75 grain uh, boat tail hollow point from Hornady. Okay. And I run that instead of the Sierra match King, because with the, uh, you get a slightly higher BC, out of the uh, 75 grain Hornady than you do out of the uh, 77 grain. So, so I'm going to capitalize on this again. I like that you said Hornady. I know that if you're looking at the precision game, they're going to be a little bit more expensive and whatnot, as opposed to like Gorilla Ammo and Prime Ammo, stuff like that. All fantastic manufacturers. But what I like about the Hornady aspect of it is every that's a that's a household brand. Everybody knows Hornady, right? So it's pretty easy to find that stuff. I have a question. Shoot, Kent. If I put core lock in my 30 odd six, will I make it? No. Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cam says, yeah. All right. Well, just checking. That dude exudes, he is ex it just oozing confidence in you, brother, man. You got it. We got to get you out to the long range here soon. I shot 50 yards with my pistol the other day. No, you know what? Okay. So, in all seriousness, Set me up from top to bottom. I assume I got no guns, right? Which is a terrible assumption to make in life, but your boy ain't got no guns. What do I buy? What, how do I get set up? Get me into, the, get me into a DMR match um, reasonably without mortgaging my house or you mm -hmm. know, prostituting myself or something like that. How do I, how do, I do it? Talk me through it. You're, what you would do, not... Any other opinions or preferences or biases, what you would do? Hit me. What I would do. So, uh, did you – oh, and real quick about the core lock before we move away from core lock ammunition. There's a video from like two weeks ago of me using a thirty out 6 uh, bolt action Remington 700 and making um, – I want to say it was uh, – 500 yard shot on a six inch steel or something like that and hitting it with core locked ammo. So core locked ammo is, is good ammo. Um, but your, uh, your question was, what would I do as far as like, you know, uh, economy, right? So like, uh, yeah. trying to, save, trying to save money and stuff like that and being kind of new to the game. So you don't want to go balls deep into it and just throw, you know, whole bunches of money in something that you might not even yeah. enjoy. Yeah. Somewhere between Tasco and night force. <laughs> Some, somewhere <laughs> that's that's a that's a pretty broad scope my man no pun intended um so somewhere between tasco and a two thousand dollar optic yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um i've had really good luck with the swfa scopes uh i have the swfa fixed 10 power i've actually got multiple of those um, I've got uh, SWFA fix 12, fix six, 16, uh, a 3 to 15 that I run on a gun that I did a out of the box into the match review. Um, so SWFA scopes are really good, but um, for somebody who's been doing it for a while, like I do a lot of holdovers and stuff. So I can really appreciate what Primary Arms has done with their reticles. You know, like I don't, I don't like to dial knobs. I like to do holdovers. So I can use my primary arms R grid, and I can just do my holdovers, and that makes for a faster, you know, shot on you know targets at different distances and stuff like that. Um, and also, you can you know mill targets really easy with them and stuff. So I would say jump on a a primary arm scope and maybe spend you know three fifty or so on a scope. Okay. In there. Okay. So we got um, three fifty on glass. What are we putting it on? Um, and as far as the pew, the pew, you, you talking bolt or gas? Cause that, like, I know, I know we were, that was kind of the topic of discussion, but bolt or gas. Give me one for each. Okay. If I was going to sling a bolt, um, I want to say Ruger American because I've got a Ruger American predator and six, five Creedmoor, but to make it match worthy, 
you need to work on it. Um, the bolt lift is real heavy. And whenever you have a heavy bolt lift, it's going to throw you off of the gun. So uh, I did a lot of work to it to lighten up the bolt lift. Uh, it was a lot of polishing, a lot of cuss words, and um, a long, an extended uh, bolt handle um, because, you know, leverage and such. We learned that in science class. So, yeah, I put uh, a longer bolt knob on it, and um, I polished up a bunch of stuff, made stuff slickery. And uh, I used grease instead of oil uh, to make the bolt throw a lot lighter so I could actually run that bolt um, and not move the gun an insane amount and come completely off targets uh, running the bolt. So I would say that if I was going to go with a bolt gun, it would probably be that one. Or they, they got some... Just about every company like has has their version of like a, a budget bolt gun that's not bad. As long as it uses AICS magazines and it has a, a, a nice feeling, you know, bolt lift and stuff like that. Like if the, if the bolt feels terrible uh, in the store, it's probably going to keep feeling terrible uh, until you work on it. Um, so am I pulling the action out and bedding and putting in compound and doing all this stuff or I didn't. where did you go? There's uh, now if I'm just going to throw money at it and it's going to be like, but it's still going to be a budget gun. I would say, get you a Ruger American predator, get the uh, Magpul pro hunter stock, uh, get you a Magpul bipod because those are awesome. I've got three of them now. Uh, get the Magpul bipod, get you some AICS magazines and a primary arm scope with a primary arm scope mount. And you're good to go. So you're you're you'd probably be running just into a grand at that point, and you would have something solid. And I'm running uh, Creedmoor in that gun, six five. Yeah, yeah, I, I would okay. run Creed, um, but that puts you into an open division. So like wherever you shoot, you're going to be an open division if you run six five Creed. Um, so I mean, you could you could get it in in three oh eight if you wanted. Just, just to point out. He just described exactly how my rifle is set up, with the exception I have a right-on optic on top of it. <laughs> but yeah, Ruger American Predator in 308 with a Magpul stock, Magpul bipod, and AICS magazines. It it's been fantastic. Okay. I will I will testify to the sticky bolt though. Um, and you guys will see this when I post that YouTube video where I review the. So the the point of this upcoming YouTube video is going to be to obviously to review the right on optic, but I am going to talk about some of the issues that I've had with the Ruger American, and you'll see it in there after a couple of rounds. Like I have to crank that bolt up to eject the spent casing. It's it's mad <clears throat> it's maddening. It really is. Um. So yeah, it's and the other problem with uh. The American Predator, in my opinion, because, you know, I was talking about recoil impulse, is as a 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.5 Creedmoor doesn't really have a lot of recoil. It's not bad, um, but it felt terrible in the uh, Ruger American Predator. So this is my Ruger American Predator. I've still got the original Ruger American stock. Um, I've actually got a Caldwell bipod on this one, I believe. But I've got the tall bipod and not the short one because I planned on hunting with it. Um, I put a Control Solutions muzzle brake on it that I won in a match. And this one came with a Vortex scope on it. But what I was talking about was, and this one uses AICS magazines. Uh, I've got the uh, a two-inch bolt handle on this one. So I've got a little bit more uh, to... to you know, for purchase, instead of that little stubby thing that comes on, it's pretty useless. And it, it's still heavy, but I've done a lot of work to it. It's still pretty heavy on that lift. Um, once you fire it, your initial lift is the heaviest one because you're cocking the gun whenever you do it. So this lift right here is the heavy one. Um, the action is really smooth now. It doesn't sound like a zipper, you notice because I, I've done a lot of work to it and stuff. And I mean, now the bolt would run great. And the reason why is because it's not cocking. But whenever you need to cock it, that bolt lift gets to be pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, like I said, I smoothed this one out a pretty good amount so that I can run it better. 
but it's still not, you know, it's not a, it's not a teak. It's not a teak action. Yeah. I'm, te so I'm telling you, man, I sitting next to these guys at the range that are running like these bench rest, super precision, just watching them up, like open their bolt, throw another bullet in. And I was like, why isn't mine that smooth? Like, <laughs> I don't even care if it's accurate. I just want it to open easier. <laughs> I just want to fling bullets out of it. Um, I can I can show you what I did to it, um, like after this or whatever. I can show you what I did to it. The reason I didn't say a ride-on optic is because I don't have a ride-on optic. I've never tested their stuff. Um, the reason that I like primary arms so much is I've actually tested their optics. Uh, I've done scope tracking uh, error tests and stuff like that with them. Athlon, SWFA, Vortex. Uh, I've done, but I, I've just never done a ride on. Um, yeah, I, I've never done. just did a box test on his ride on. A to, box test is a little bit different than to, what I'm talking to be, about. To be fair, I, I think Cameron would probably be the expert on this one. <laughs> no, I'm just pointing out you did a box test. That's that's when you make sure it fits back in the box, right? That's yeah. What that is? No, yeah, something like that. I'm pretty All sure. All right, good. Perfect. I'm uh, yeah. dumber than I actually am, by the way. All right, so we're done. So we're done with the uh, we're the done with the bolt gun. gun. I'm going to buy a six five Creed more, right, honey? Awesome, cool. Uh, she says yes. <laughs> um, so that's good. So now, what about what about the uh, gas gun? What are we doing for gas gun? I love gas guns, and the reason I love gas guns is because, like, I enjoy throwing a bolt. Don't get me wrong. Like, I I enjoy it. It's 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 fun, um, but. I do feel that we have evolved as human beings and now we're beyond that, you know, like uh, as far as, you know, like combat effectiveness and other things like that, we, we we've moved on past the bolt gun. Like we don't use horse and buggy anymore. So I I'm a huge fan of gas guns. Um, I would still say go with a six, five Creed more um, j just because they're, they're easy. You know, it's like uh, it, it's just an easy caliber. Uh, easy chambering. Um, so I'd go, I would say either go with a 6.5 Creedmoor or a 6.5 Grendel. And if I had to pick a 6.5 Creed, I would say go with the PA 6.5 because that thing's awesome and it's not expensive. So I would say PA 6.5 and I would say again, primary arms optic with a, a primary arms uh, one and a half inch uh, scope um, rings or mount. And, um, Magpul um, bipod, and if if my application was a thousand yards and in, then I would say go with a six five Grindle um, gas gun, and hmm, manufacture probably Kraus. I would say uh, I would probably say go with the Kraus because they're you know, they're affordable. They're good people to work with and stuff like that. I mean, the, the only the only problem that I've heard from other people, this wasn't my experience, but from other people, was uh, wait time. You know, like people were talking about uh, wait time being, you know, longer than anticipated. But that's because, you know, you order a gun, you want it today. That's Well, that's a sign of a quality product too, right? It, yeah. There's no wait times on shitty guns. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody waiting for their Taurus to show up. Let's be honest. Let's let's hate on Taurus for a while. I do hate let's me do a Taurus. That. Let's do I, that. I tell people that Taurus and High Point just. Ugh. But all right. So so one more. Let me let me ask you one more. Okay. So you recommended a, a Palmetto State Armory. Yeah. Now I'm not this guy because there's two of them in my safes, and uh, I know I know you've reviewed a lot of their stuff. I know there's a lot of their stuff on your channel. Quality better than it used to be. Yeah. Is or was quality never bad in the first place and dudes just didn't know what was what? Customer service was bad. And okay. luckily they um they they addressed it as an issue. Uh they brought on Chris Vermillion as their uh, marketing director. And uh you see him in Palmetto State Armory's uh videos and stuff like that. Um I d I don't think that it was like the the leadership at the time because um the the McKellums are good people. I like them, but you know, you, you you if you hire, you know, thirty people, really honestly and truly, at least twenty of them are going to be dirtbags now. Um, so they had some issues with their customer service, 
and um, they said, hey, this is a problem. They listen to their you know, customers and consumers. And I know there are plenty of people who hate on PSA and there are people like, oh, I haven't bought anything from PSA in years because they're garbage. And I'm like, well, they fixed it. So you're, you're just missing out now. So that's all. Um, yeah, their, their, their customer service used to suck. Their, uh, but it's, it's, in my opinion, it has gotten way better, way better. Anytime I've ever had a problem with their stuff, I don't tell them who I am whenever I call for a customer service issue. I haven't had any customer service issues actually in a while, but uh, if I had one or whatever, which was uh, the most recent one, um, I ordered a 20 inch um, AR 15, five, five, six with a A2 carry handle. And that's the, that's the one where I shot it uh, iron sights out to 500 yards. Yeah. That one. Um, it, whenever they sent it to me, it didn't have the uh, A2 carry handle. It had a flip up rear sight. And I was like, Hey, there was a reason I wanted that. I was like, <laughs> I was like, That's the reason I wanted it is because it's what I ordered. And they were like, Oh my God, we're so sorry. And they sent me one out right after. And it was, you know, I got it a couple days later. They like expedited the shipping and everything because they were like, Oh, we made a mistake. You know, everybody does it. So Quality control used to be the issue, or not quality control, customer service used to be the issue, but I, I really think that they fixed that, in my opinion. So so you're saying their quality control is good now, or yeah. always has been good? Yeah, well, okay. okay, quality control, if we're talking about quality control, I did have an issue with their PA65 whenever they first sent it to me, and I was like, hey, this is messed up. And then uh, I sent it back to them and they did not fix it. And then they sent it back. And that was what kind of started my relationship with them was I said, Hey, this is, this isn't right. You know, this is what you guys did was wrong here. And they fixed it. You know, they were really like, uh, our, you know, it was like a big R bad and they, they made it right in a big way. So quality control. I, pr I probably have 10, PSA AR-15s at my house right now that when I got them, I took them out of the box, went and shot them and have had zero malfunctions. Yeah. That's in tough. fact, the only one that I've got here right now that I had problems with whenever I opened it up out of the box was the PA-65. And that's what, you know, started my, my relationship with them. And since they fixed it, that thing's dope. I love that thing. It's awesome. So it's one of those, Kent, you're familiar with those conversations when you go to a manufacturer and there's that, that awkward exchange where the manufacturer is like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. It happens less with me than it does with you two, but occasionally people know. No, when I, if I call a pistol company and I'm like, yo, we got, we got some stuff to talk about mm -hmm. and I get somebody with a brain, it really is nice because everybody's going to screw up. I got no problems with that. Lord knows I screw up at my job all the time. Uh, the day job, not the gun teaching job, or there'd be a bunch of dead people around. But anywho, so that's cool. So we've got we've got our two budget guns, and we're going to the arena in October to shoot with Ash Hess and Jack, right? Is that, that what we're mm -hmm. gonna do? I'm just sure. I'm just gonna go buy that six five and I'm gonna I'm gonna roll right into the primary and secondary man's awesome layer of killer shooty things and I'm going to do all right. Do it. I just want to say it would be an awesome, it'd be an awesome uh, YouTube video of you two in a, in a, in a DRM match together. I, wait, I would, wait. I, I would become a Patreon supporter in a heartbeat just for what's that. What's that? What's that movie with Danny DeVito and the normal dude? I just told you one of us, one of us is Danny DeVito. Yeah, one of us is Danny DeVito. That's all I'm saying. I don't think Cam's that short. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Uh, that be fun now. Yeah, that's awesome, man. All right. So, guys, we're going to start wrapping it up. Uh, we're getting to the getting to our hour mark. Uh, the YouTube people are going to start shutting Kent down here in a little bit. Um, <laughs> so, with that, uh, Kent, let's turn it over to you for some closing comments, brother. Uh, so, Cam. 
you have this thing about you where there's more in your mind than you can ever possibly get out in a given hour or a given whatever. Um, I'm not a skirt blower, dude, but th some of that stuff that you were Facebook messaging me about, like the maths, that's just hurt my brain, but it was really awesome. Um, so thanks for coming on and doing this. It's really cool to have somebody here that could talk intelligently about this stuff. Cause Lord knows, you know, we all talk about staying in our lane and you're in the express lane and I'm, a, I'm over here on the you know side of the highway, just trying to get my blinkers working again. So that's really cool of you to come out. Thank you for doing that. Um, as far as me, private training on the pistol range, come on out, find me at local matches, try to beat me. You probably will. Uh, nothing wrong with that neither. Reviewing some guns and uh, training season is in full effect. So come take a class with me, with me or from me. Always a student, sometimes a teacher. So uh, please, let's get out there. I just had an awesome time with Phil Groff in his uh, armed vehicle defense class. And, uh, you know, I did not die shooting a compensator inside of a car. God forbid. So uh, let's do this. Let's get out on the range and uh, do whatever. If, if long range is your bag, uh, you know. Show me your group. Show me your targets. Like, do something with your life for Christ's sake. Stop talking about it on the internet. So uh, that's what I got for you. Always thanks for having me. And Cam, thank you for doing your professor shit again. You're always awesome at it. Professor shit. Yeah, that, that that's your that's your new call sign, brother. You're the professor. No, the uh, there's uh, I do have a buddy who is the Pew professor already. It's uh, Gil Narvez of Fortitude Consulting. And uh, he is the 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 Pew prof uh, professor, and uh, I, I actually go help out with his class every now and again, whenever he does like a carbine class or something like that. And I go help out with you know like just make sure that people are you know applying the proper funda principles of the shot processes. Um, I, I just make sure that people aren't you know doing dumb stuff out there. I make sure they're doing a uh, in an actual stable position, which is. Uh, greatly undermined it, I find. Um, I think having a stable position is one of the most important parts of uh, long-range shooting. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, actually, uh, just got – just lightning struck my brain. Uh, we are going to do a part two discussion for the long-range stuff. Well, we're going to talk about all the other stuff other than guns and caliber and cartridges and all that stuff. We're going to talk about the support and logistics – down to the fundamentals, you know, your stable shooting platform, your gear bags, all that other stuff. Cam, I'd love to have you back on to talk about that stuff, brother. Um, but with that, remind me before we before we, before we we get offline uh, to get all of your uh, channel information and all the charities and stuff you're supporting. Uh, but with that, let me kick it over to you for your final comments. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to uh, – there, there's a few people, you know, who, you know – do really awesome stuff. Todd Scandrid of, uh, of, of uh, <laughs> Resurgence PPG. Like I said, that's one of the, the charities I like to donate to. Uh, Ash and Jack uh, host some pretty awesome matches. Ray Helms or X-Ring. His YouTube channel's pretty dope. And he hosts a really good match. Uh, and he's really receptive to the match director. Uh, Todd Van Langen, uh, Todd Resource Management, Richard Todd, Ash Hess. Uh, um, already said him. Uh, Ashton Johnson. Yeah. All kinds of people that I've already mentioned, uh, aerodynamics, all these people, awesome dudes, awesome chicks, uh, awesome shooters. Um, and be looking on my YouTube channel, AC494. Be looking on my YouTube channel. I'm going to be reviewing some ammunition here soon that got um, uh, an, an ammunition manufacturer reached out to me and said, Hey, you know, we'd like for you to uh, evaluate our ammo as far as it being a. Uh, uh, long range match ammo. Whenever you asked me that question, that was the first company that came to mind, but I haven't personally evaluated their ammunition. I've actually still got it sitting right here. It's a uh, true ballistics ammo. And I'm going to be evaluating this ammo, uh, in a YouTube video here. As soon as I can, I still got to go do army stuff, uh, getting jerked around by the army some more. Um, but I won't, so I won't be doing the video this weekend, but I'll probably be doing it the weekend after. Uh, I plan on, you know, evaluating their ammo. I'm going to figure out what kind of SDs I can get out of it, what kind of shot groups I can get out of it, out of multiple platforms and stuff like that. So, yeah, good ammo, good guns, good people. I'll stand a bit. Well, thank you for coming on the channel again. 
Uh, we're definitely going to have you back for part two and possibly even part three, four, five, and six of this. Is we're all going to have master's degrees from the professor by the time this is over with. Uh, but with that, uh, Cameron, again, thanks for coming out, buddy. Uh, as always, those of you that tuned in to join us live, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, by all means, feel free to leave your comments, questions below. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. As always, check out rightonoptics.com. Remember, code TRAMSY will get you 15% off. Head on over to Head Down Firearms and go check those guys out. Tell them TJ sent you. I'm not sure it'll get you anything, but damn it, they're going to know I'm showing them some love. So with that, guys, God bless you all. And until we see each other again, get out and shoot.